Awesome. Well, I, I had a chance to read your story and super fascinated. This is all about you and your journey in music. I know uh, this deal and everything has been kind of quick. I mean, especially with the weird, the weird sense of the world right now. So I'd love to hear how this all kind of happened for you. Yeah, it was quick. It was <laughs> the quickest ever <laughs> ever happened to me. It was, it was crazy. Um, yeah, yeah. Just, I recently, actually not recently, I guess it's recently for me. Um, like two years ago, I got, um, a manager and that kind of like opened me up to like the business side of things. Cause I had no idea what I was doing before that. I was just like mm -hmm. on Instagram singing other people's <laughs> songs. Sure. Um, yeah. And then, uh, she advised me, you know, to start TikTok. And I was like, do I have to dance though? And she was like, no, you can sing. And I was like, oh, okay, fine. And then, <laughs> so I started that um, in February of 2020. Wow. Um, and then it went, it went wild. Like here we are now. Huh? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Wow. Cool. That's, I mean, so cool. And I love your style. Is that Kuropi? Is that the, is that the little, um, the, 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 the frog on your hat? Have all you I seen? know about it is that it's a frog. Okay. That's all you know. I think it's like a old, like a little anime type character from oh. back way back when, but anyway, I don't know. I could be totally wrong, but anyway, this isn't about Kuropi or, or that. So <laughs> <laughs> first off, tell me about where you were born and raised. Yeah, uh, Houston, Texas, baby. Oh, awesome. What part? Uh, I'm in Bel Air. Are you still there now? Yes, I'm here right now. Literally, as we speak, you're in Houston, Texas. That's awesome. Room. Yeah. Okay. So, in, in your room, is that your home, like your bedroom growing up? Uh, since I was like 10, yeah. Okay. So, where were you born? In Houston, also? Mm -hmm, just in a different house. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. then you moved to that house when you were 10. Yes. Okay. I did see that you started piano very early. Was that the first instrument you learned how to play? Yeah. Yeah. That was the first, like mm -hmm. anything I learned pretty much. Um, yeah. I, I just saw my mom doing it because she's super talented and she was like a, a little kid prodigy when she was little. And she oh, really? Yeah, she's so good at everything. Like it's it's kind of annoying. I'm just kidding. It's great. It's perfect. <laughs> um <laughs> like a like a like, does she is that was that her career when you were a kid or no, she no. was like the thing is oh sorry, I didn't mean to play my piano right now, but um well, you can <laughs> <laughs> like she's so good at everything, like she's so like well rounded that she was an incredible student her whole life uh -huh. and a musician and an like a physical artist um and then she's like okay I want to be a gynecologist and then did that interesting so I'm like why are you so good at so many things you're perfect and I want to be you that's what I think. yeah I mean that's fascinating that she decided to go to that route but wow okay but so she was always still obviously playing piano you you, you have recollect or early memories of her playing piano yeah, exactly. It's it's like her favorite thing to do in her pastime, I think. Yeah. Okay. So she would just pick it up as like a hobby or like something fun to do around the house or, you know, it's yeah. a kill time kind of thing. Yeah. And she's been doing it since she was little. So I think it's like just a like comfort love yeah. thing for her. And then she kind of, did you have an interest? Do you, do you remember? Like, I mean, four, you probably wouldn't, but did, did you have, did she think that you had an interest? Like, is there pictures of you as like a little, little kid? Like, smashing the keys or anything yeah. like that okay yeah I actually did have an interest I think just because I saw her doing it and I think I, I wanted to be her and I still do want to be her um so I think it was just like I just want to do whatever she's doing whatever and mom was like, doing yeah I also wanted to do like whatever my brother was doing I was just like they're so cool I want to do that too mm -hmm. your brother also a musician yeah he played flamenco guitar uh as a wow. kid but now he does like jazz piano he he makes his own uh jazz piano pieces which is so crazy that's incredible that's really cool and from from the piano did were you in like from lessons were you another prodigy kid like were you doing recitals or like all that as a young kid a young girl i was not good um <laughs> really <laughs> I mean, I, I was, I just, I don't think I was gifted. 
Um, okay. Well, I, you obviously are gifted quite a bit. Well, thank you. I think I later found out that like I have, you know, I can like, you know, I have a singing voice. Uh-huh. Okay. <laughs> but I, I think like with the instruments, I think that's a secondary thing for me. It was just what I got into first because I was really okay. shy. I was shy about singing because um, I liked it so much. And I was like, mm-hmm. I don't want to tell anyone about this. But Okay. Yeah. So when did you play? You picked up guitar soon after the piano or a few years later? Yeah, like several years later, like uh, in the sixth grade. Okay. Like, like 10, 11, I don't know. Uh-huh. Yeah. Okay. And was there just, was it because your other, your, your brother was playing it or did you have an interest in it or? It was actually a mandatory class. Oh, wow. <laughs> That's actually pretty rad. <laughs> you have to learn guitar. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. It was just for a semester. It was like in sixth grade, they made us try every single, um, uh, whatever the like extra classes are. Yeah, extra, like kind of like an exp- like an, a, a cycle, like where they you do like art for a little bit and then yes. PE or whatever. Okay, got it. And guitar happened to be one of those. Wow. Yeah, and and it was super cool. It, I was like super excited about it. I I don't think I would have taken it if it weren't for that, just because I'm intimidated by, Mm -hmm. you know, classes of, uh, I just, I get scared. Yeah, Um, that would be kind of intimidating, I would think. Like, not only do you have to learn an instrument, but you probably have to perform it in front of all of your peers. Yeah. So if you're not good, people are going to be like, did you hear uh, Madeline play guitar (laughs) earlier? Like, it was not good. (laughs) So true. And I'm like a super perfectionist, so like, I love to do things in secret so that I can show people when it's perfect. You know what I mean? Uh, sure. Yeah. So classes are scary, but um, yeah, I just took that one little semester and then I went home and never took a class again. And I was just like, I'm going to do this in secret and okay. did it uh, in secret. And when did the songwriting start? It was right then. Yeah. Really? Was, yeah. I think guitar kind of opened that world to me. Okay. So once you had the guitar and you, you learned some notes, did you always, were you always like a writer or I don't mean you talked about singing, but were, were you always like writing poems or lyrics or? Yeah, exactly. I, I've always been like an avid journaler. Okay. Um, I just, for some reason thought that my thoughts were really interesting when I was like eight. And I was like, I have to write all of this down for all of the, um, archaeologists for (laughs) (laughs) um no yeah I I've just loved writing English has always been my favorite subject um okay yeah for sure it's it's a great outlet for me and I think yeah it's it's just always worked um Mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden I could combine them all and it was it was fun amazing amazing well you talked about getting a manager uh but how how did how do you go from playing, you know, writing songs in your bedroom, <clears throat> excuse me, when do you, when do you get the courage to like, you know, this was always your thing, you're, you're keeping the bedroom until it's perfect. When, when is it perfect? And when is it the first time do you like, go, okay, I'm going to like go online to stream a song or like, how did you first like break through that, you know, fear? Yeah, that's hard. Um, I think an easy way for me to do it was I, just sing covers, but in my own way. Um, okay. And I still do that today because it's it's so fun. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think I wasn't yet ready to to show my my music, um, because I was I was just like still tinkering with it, you know, making it, you know, what I I wanted. But I think honestly, once I got um, sort of like a small little team behind me, just like my manager and my mom. Um, then I was like, I will show you these things. And I've always showed my mom, my music. I mean, okay. like she's my, she's my biggest supporter in the world, but, um, yeah. And like my friends, it's, it's cool. Like in the beginning, you can just show your friends and test it out. You can even like play them a song and don't even tell them that it's yours, but just like play it as if you're playing like something else. Oh, sure. Like, an, like another cover that they may not have heard before. Yeah, exactly. And then they, and you can see their genuine reaction without saying that it's yours. It's kind of scary, but 
Um, I love that. That's a brilliant idea, though. I mean, yeah. so once once the covers start, like, when did you what was the first like, how, how does the manager come into the picture? I guess that's my, where I, my question is. Like, so yeah. you go from what you had an Instagram and you were just putting up covers of what like Frank Ocean or whatever you were listening to at the time. And then some that attracted somebody's attention or. Yeah, exactly. So I think eventually I started like getting attention from the artists of the songs I was covering, which is Oh, really wow. Wow, yeah. that's really cool. Super sick, yeah. Um, and uh, so this one time I posted a cover of this. I didn't even post it on my Instagram. I just put it in my story. Mm -hmm. um, and it was of Spencer Sutherland. I don't know if you know him, but he's so freaking awesome and you should know him. Uh, but look now, go ahead. Yes, I, I covered one of his songs and then he put it on his story. And oh. then his, uh, manager is my manager so wow yeah she saw it from a story and was like oh my gosh hey amazing and so you were just a fan of his you covered one of his songs and then he re-shared it on his story and that attract attracted the attention of the management that was like oh i want to work with you too you're amazing exactly yeah wow and then at that point you only had a, you were just doing covers how do you do you share your your own songs with with this manager at this point exactly Is that kind of how the conversation started uh there was a lot of conversation <laughs> <laughs> it was like who are you how old are you can i talk yeah. to you without your mom like and I was a minor at that point, so I couldn't talk to her without my mom. So, um, you know, we had a FaceTime situation going and uh, eventually it came up like, do you write your own songs? Like, I'd love to hear them. And I mean, it took a little bit of time for me to like f find one that I wanted to show and that I was confident about. Um, and yeah, it's, it's actually being released in like a month or something. The first this song that I ever showed my manager oh so the ep that's out currently that this song isn't on it oh wow okay okay uh well it, i mean i bet in the beginning too that must have been like are you really you know spencer's manager I, i'm sure there was some doubt there right no totally yeah <laughs> Actually, i dm spencer and was like is this is this lady legit and he was like yeah it's my it's my manager actually so <laughs> wow okay that's cool so you had that you had somebody actually validating the the person for you and yeah. then so what and then this person's like you need to get on tiktok like how do you get on to tiktok and then obviously now you're signing warner which is huge yeah first we we tried uh instagram just like uh just more covers better covers mm -hmm. covers with prettier visuals i love uh, your style by the way thank you. yeah thank you so much um yeah, and, and I think, well, my manager is super good at spotting things. She used to be a talent scout. And I think she like really is good at knowing what will like resonate with people. And she's like, oh, like, I think your look and your sound would be really good on TikTok. Uh, and so I did that and she was so right, yeah. Okay, how did TikTok start? Like, I mean, obviously you had one, your original song was really what blew up, right? I mean, you were doing covers yeah but what gave you the courage to put out as a child yeah i don't even know it was like a spur of the moment thing i was like i saw i'm on the side of tiktok that um you know where there's a lot of uh original music mm -hmm. and i think that's super cool i love that part of tiktok um and so i was like i like maybe i can show people my song and maybe they'll react in a similar way to these um and it would be cool if they could hear it and i i, I saw like people getting a following from their original music and uh you know it, it like actually going well for them so i thought oh this like could be cool um and it was just like a random night like probably in the middle of the night i was just like i'm gonna film this and it's in my bedroom and i was just like bam and then bam and then <laughs> yeah Wow. Okay. Well, at this point, like before you put up that song, were you already gaining somewhat of attraction, like some traction on TikTok prior to putting up your own song? Like, yeah, I yeah. think some of my covers were, were the thing that kind of like got me a 
got me people watching. Right. So you had, you had people's attention and you're like, okay, well now it's time to, we got, people are looking, let's put out something that's really mine and see what happens. Yeah. Test it out. Test it out for sure. And then it does obviously extremely well. Which is so crazy. I had no idea. Like, how could you, how could you even think that would ever happen? But it did. It was so cool. Was it like a very quick growth or was it like an over or yeah. So like overnight you like check your phone and it's dead because it has so many notifications. Yeah. I, <laughs> I had to turn my notifications off. I just can't deal with that. <laughs> oh my gosh. That must have been a big day, right? From, from having a day where it's like, oh, I hope I get, you know, a few followers today to like, I can't even open this app because it's just going to break because no, so many people are trying to like, like and share and whatever. I mean, that must've been crazy. Oh, it's so cool. It's, it's the coolest ever. It was crazy. Wow. Okay. So you, that's going obviously very, very well. And do you, at this point, I'm sure you're getting more DMS from, from labels and and every, everything else that's happening because they watch that obviously. Yeah. Yeah. So talk to me about that. That must've been exciting too. Like, whoa, this is really a thing. No, totally. Yeah. Um, It was overwhelming for sure. I was just like, you know, in quarantine, being a person in quarantine, kind of sad. And Mm -hmm. um, just like putting stuff on TikTok because it's fun and there's nothing else to do. Um, And, uh, you know, I I wasn't expecting to get this attention. And then a lot of like important people that have, you know, record jobs, uh, we're trying to say hi. And then I was like, hi. Um, yeah. And we had like a few months where it was like zooms almost every day with labels and different, you know, uh, people in the business, uh, just like saying hi, meeting, talking, talking about, you know, possible deals and stuff. So yeah, it was Wow. I'm sure it was. How is mom taking this all in? Was she like, whoa, like this is, this is crazy. Yeah. She was like, whoa, this is crazy. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, as a, like a huge fan and a, and a piano player, like this must've been kind of like, you're kind of absorbing somewhat of her dream. I would think that's some aspect of it. Maybe. I, I think definitely it's, it's something that like, it's something of a dream, you know? Right. Um, it's just so cool for us to like watch it happen and for like me to live it. Um, but she's like the most supportive person. Like before all my Zoom, she's like, do you want tea? And like, how can I help? And like, uh, she's so she's so good as a human. Um, yeah, I love her. That's so amazing. That's so amazing. Well, okay, so tell me about this record. Chapter, it's chapter one. Obviously there's more chapters to come the longing is the first chapter you said you're talking about another song that's going to come out in a month or so but let's talk about this record and were these all songs you had done prior to like quarantine tell tell me about recording the songs and because we're kind of i mean obviously we're still in a pandemic you sign a record deal in a pandemic it's kind of a weird time for everybody not only that but you're you're getting you're putting an album out when it's usually like in these situations where it's like record and then the label will put you on a press tour and then you do a tour and you're opening up for a big artist and there's kind of like this you know recipe now there's no recipe because there's no shows like were these songs recorded like how how did the ball get rolling yeah basically it was all out of order I mean everything's still out of order I I didn't even like meet anyone in person until like a few months ago which is really weird um I, I signed on zoom I love that right here, like in this actual spot. Um, (laughs) (laughs) uh, Yeah. So it was, it was kind of like, I had these songs that I was like showing to people, uh, to labels and stuff. It was like, if, if we wanted them to hear something that I wrote and something like an example of something that I can write, um, then we, we showed them and they were the songs that I was planning on you know, releasing as my first release. Like I kind of like have mapped it all in my brain. Uh, But yeah, Warner was super cool and 
and was like, yeah, let's, we can do chapters if you want. Um, and basically after signing, it was like almost immediately after signing, they were like, we should go to LA and like, uh, have you meet producers and like, see who you vibe with. And so we can start like getting these exact songs recorded. Um, and so we did that in the first producer that I met with was perfect like perfect we're just so good together it's like uh -huh. beautiful creation time um I feel so comfortable with him he's so careful with my words and work and um yeah we just did it and yeah okay so the songs were like just demoed out and then you were able to actually get into a studio and record them properly in LA Exactly. Was that an intimidating experience? Was that a like surreal? Tell me about how, like how, what were you feeling when you go in there with this room with somebody you've never met, and they probably got gold plaques all over the walls and the whole nine. You know what I mean? You're like, okay, uh, like was that intimidating at all or no? Definitely intimidating. I mean, I have anxiety in any situation, like literally, like meeting a dog, meeting anyone. <laughs> meeting a tiny kid like I'm so scared for some reason um so yeah I was like freaking the fuck out I mean it mm -hmm. wasn't it wasn't cool for me um emotionally I was like ah! but it was sure. so it was so sick and awesome because I immediately felt at home it was like the kind of thing where I walk in and I'm like oh, so relieved because it wasn't crazy it wasn't like weird or too professional um the room had beautiful lighting i just felt at home yeah okay. and, yeah and and he was so welcoming and comforting i think just the idea yeah. of meeting with you know important people like that is so terrifying um mm -hmm. for me and i think just in general but um when you actually get to know the actual people and they're yeah. cool it's super cool yeah, definitely. And th there's a concept behind, like, tell me about the chapter concept. So you, the first chapter, the, the four songs that are right now is called The Longing. Yes. And there's, that's kind of the concept behind the four songs. Mm -hmm. And then does it evolve into a longer piece? Like, tell me about the, what you have going on up here as far as yeah. this rollout is. Absolutely. Um, so I'd say my songs are pretty much like stories of, of my emotions. Mm -hmm. um, and so I kind of wanted to put it together as like a, a book, like a storybook. Okay. Um, and chapter one is really about like being born and, and then growing up and loss and all of the like painful things that come with like growing from nothing. Um, so that's literally like my childhood story book. And then the next chapter will be whatever comes after that, which I can Okay, sure. Um, and then, you know, so on and so forth. Uh, but yeah, it, I am so glad that I can express myself in this way because it's exactly what, it's, it's how I process like what's happened to me. Um, so it, it's good that they let that happen. That's amazing amazing and were you able to shoot a video for this i mean you you were able to shoot a video for the song as well that must have been exciting like have you, a professional music video and in that whole was that a, a cool experience for you no totally that was i think it was like one of the most surreal parts um because i just walked in and there were so many people doing so many things and it was like everyone is so good at their individual job and it's like, I'm just like, um, hi. <laughs> it was wild. It was absolutely wild. I mean, it's stuff of dreams. It's stuff in movies that I've seen. Um, and I'm like, okay, I guess I'm in the movie now. Yeah, uh, they're all there for you, right? It's crazy. It's crazy. It's, it's scary to me that they're all there for me. But it's awesome. Yeah, I was going to say, well, you deserve it. I mean, your songs are amazing. What you're doing is amazing. Thank you. Um, and what about, I mean, uh, things are hopefully starting to open up here in the next, you know, five, six months. Like, are you excited to play these songs live? I'm, I, I'm guessing you haven't had a chance to do that other than maybe to your friends. Yeah, I haven't really done that. I had one like tiny little Warner showcase. Okay. Uh, 
just just where I like got to sing my songs for the first time in front of like people uh -huh. um but yeah I I can't wait to to get this this rolling it's crazy <laughs> so exciting I love it well thank you so much Madeline for talking with me today I really appreciate it of course of course thank you so much for having me yeah I have one more question for you before I let you go Please. I want to know if you have any advice for aspiring artists. Ooh, that's an awesome question. Uh, advice is hard. Um, because I always want to remind people that it might not work for you. Like it, it's seriously only take it if it resonates. But I would say to, to write for yourself first and make art that you really like. And I think like the best art comes when you don't think about what other people will hear. Um, I think that's how you can develop your sound and, and who you really are and develop, you know, feelings out in songs. Um, so yeah, my piece of advice is to write for you first. Bring me the best word.